Welcome back to Ragtar, and through this door, that's the first boss of the first temple, and I am just gonna go jump right in because I ain't scared, a no first boss, a no first temple, by the way, this first temple took me like four episodes. I'm gonna have to go back and check other series, I don't think any other first temple in any other 3D Zelda game that I've played on my channel has taken this many episodes, but, oh, I forgot, this boss is epic as fuck. Dude, I was thinking about that actually, how... In a lot of Zelda uh, games, they have a really good reputation of making bosses super epic. Like, if there's one franchise of games that's really good at making, like, ridiculously epic bosses, it's this one. Like, I swear, every time I play a Zelda game, I'm just like, oh, my epicness. There's no, like, tiny bosses in Zelda games. They're all big, gigantic badasses. Like, Twilight Para- Twilight. It's not Twilight, it's Twilight Parasite Darubia. All right. What we need... Oh, I don't even want to do that. I messed up. Oh, what I should be doing is this. So you gotta... Oh, crap. Well, you gotta do it while they're not attacking you. you. Gotta do it quick. Lock on, lock on, and then do that. And then, that should make him blow up in the mouth a little bit. I don't know if that's gonna cause any extra damage. Eh. You know what? Blowing up in the mouth a little bit, that's enough for old Raktar. I wanna wait for this guy to attack before I start pulling my shit. Although his attack pattern is apparently really slowly. These guys are okay with just waiting around, but something also gives me the feeling that that is just like the pre-boss. Like that was just the boss to, yeah. I was like, there's no way that that was the full dude. That's the boss to unlock the boss. Giganticwar. Oh, he's got a, where do I, who has an eye exit? Goma. Goma. Which, I mean, maybe that, knowing the Zelda world, that could be like a totes throwback. The fact that they decided to make that eye exactly like Goma. And I was waiting- oh, there we go. I was like, how am I gonna get bombs? And I forgot that Big Monkey, who's grateful, big orangutan, they're all orangutans because you can see the booties. Well, they're probably like a Zelda-specific enemy. But I forgot that big orangutan, because you can see his booty, uh is he, like, comes back and he's thankful that you have saved him previously. Oh, shit. Gosh damn it. Gosh damn it. The pro the reason... So, by the way, in case you're wondering why I'm having such a hard time with this right now, it's because of a previous engagement that I've had with... The engagement was with Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and I have a really bad habit now of... Um, using the wrong ass, the wrong dang ass button. Did I get that bomb? Is it ever gonna hit something? There we go. I use the, I keep using the wrong dang ass button to, um, to use items because I'm using the button from Wind Waker to use items because, I mean, obviously, that's a series that I've done quite recently on my channel. Oh, dude, you can just, well, I just learned a whole new thing. You can just avoid the dudes all together. Look at this. You don't even need to... Well, wait. Where's he? Oh, there's a move. Whoa. There is a move happening right now, and I did not do a good job dodging it. But what I just realized, I don't even think you need to worry about his friends at all, because you can just wait for the big monkey to come out, and then just hit the main head. Look at that. Look at that. You don't even need to... Oh, except for... Look at that, yeah, holy shit! Why didn't I realize that before? What a cheap ass... I feel like that's sort of a cheap strat, but... And you can two-cycle him like that, holy fuck. But yeah, as I was saying, I do have this really bad habit, and I, it's happened to me a couple times in this playthrough already. Wind Waker was like a 50 episode long series, and I just came out of it like less than a couple months ago. So I've just developed a really bad habit of hitting the Wind Waker buttons instead of the other buttons. But what's weird, I guess I actually couldn't be hitting the Wind Waker buttons because I played the Wind Waker with a... I, I'm lying on accident because I played Wind Waker with the Wii U Pro Gamepad. So how could I be hitting the Wind Waker buttons if I haven't even played this game with that controller? I don't know. I guess I'm going crazy, but now we get the first of this game's crazy-ass artifacts, which... Uh, is of no importance to us, although it looks like it resembles something about Minda's helmet, so maybe it's something from her world. 
That's what I was looking for! That's a fused shadow! It's what the light spirit called dark power. Do you remember that the spirit said about how you had the, to match the power of the sh king of shadows? Could it really be so easy? Is this all there is to it? There's a total of three fused shadows. I think the other light spirits have the rest. If you want to know exactly what fused shadows are, well, maybe I'll tell you if you find the other two. I guess you'd better do your best to find them, eh? Ha ha ha! Well, and I have to go find my friends anyway. Let's not waste any more time here when we could be looking for the other two. And, of course, on top of looking for the other two, we could be looking for my friends. And, of course, she points out that a heart container fell out. I think that this might be one of the few Zelda games that points out that, like, it's like, hey, something dropped out of that guy. Like, usually they just expect you to know. I don't know why I'm slashing. I don't need anything from this room now because... I got my heart's totes refilled. Alright, I am done here. I found every box in the dungeon, which means I think I opened every chest. Got two heart pieces. That's crazy that the first dungeon of this game has two heart pieces. That's also... Man, this Zelda game is super unique. I feel like it has a lot of features that a lot of other Zelda games don't tend to have. And I know it's like a basic feature, like the idea that there is a heart piece or whatever in a place, but... And I know that's kind of a basic idea, just the idea that there's like a heart piece in a place, but you know, it is unique that there's heart pieces, a lot of heart pieces in dungeons in this game. Whereas a lot of other Zelda games, I feel like they have some, but they don't have a lot. But by the way, as you can see, the big spirit of the woods that we talked to earlier is all up talking to us. Leave these woods and go to the east, where you will find the land protected by the spirit Elden. There you will find those you seek. But know that these lands lie in the twilight. They are now a dark realm covered by the clouds of dusk. If you set foot beyond the curtain of twilight, you will revert to your beast form, so be prepared. Hero chosen by the gods, leave these woods and go to the east, to the land of Elden. Alright, and what does Midna have to say about this? There's better. Uh, that's better. Searching would be much easier now. But of course, you feel the need to go help other light spirits, don't you? Well, don't worry. When you turn into a beast again, I'll take good care of you. The first thing you need to do is find a land covered in twilight. Once you do, I'll help you out. See you later. And that's it! First temple complete, and let us see, I'm not actually sure if I can do that this yet in the game, I don't see why I wouldn't be able to do it. I'm gonna try and summon my horse, which I named Epona, I was... Oh, okay. I can't yet summon, why can't I? I almost forgot that this guy offers to sell you a full bottle, well... I... yeah, buy an oil bottle. I wasn't 100% sure, yep, it's totally... Like I was saying the last time I was here talking about this, I wasn't 100% sure that it was a full bottle, but now I know that it totally is. Let's look in my items. Yep, a bottle all unto itself, and I have a fairy in the other bottle. I'm not sure how much oil I'm going to be needing in my upcoming adventures, but hey, I've got another bottle now, which is always a good thing in any Zelda game. Also, I suppose as long as I'm here next to this guy, I started going back towards the city, and then I was like, I wonder if I can just leave now that... I'm done with where I, what I was doing before, now, like before the game was like, well you can't leave, you have to go to the forest temple, but now I'm curious if I can just head out onto the big wide open world of Hyrule. This is weird though, I forgot, I forgot how sort of weird Hyrule is in this game, except for it's not, it's not, it's totally not weird, but it's, it's got this weird function where, yeah. All the areas are like compartmentalized, which is not bad. It's still, it's the, exactly the same as what you want in like a big Hyrule Field type area. It's just a huge, explorable ass Hyrule Fieldy type area. I wonder if calling Epona out here does anything. I really think that the case is I just can't call Epona at all until I do a certain thing. That's so lame. I thought, for some reason, I remembered that you had Epona throughout this entire game. But I suppose I may very well have been wrong, and what is that thing, like, running like crazy out here? It looks like a... Oh, what, what is he dropping? They're like little weird bomb acorns. What are you? Thing! Okay. I don't know what this thing is. We're gonna lock onto him. Oh, oh my gosh! It looks like a murloc from World of Warcraft, seriously, alright. Murloc, you crazy. And I am gonna- oh, god damn, you're so hard to lock onto! There we go. Murloc, get over here. Dude, is he unaffected by my sweet, sweet boomerang? Or is he just too far away to be boomeranged? 
Or is it just too fast? What is this thing? How could I not understand what's happening right now? There we go. Get the guy. Damn it. Boomerang. Oh, the boomerang stuns him so he can't run away from me anymore. What a crazy enemy. Look at this. I just am in the first area looking at the first enemy and already this game is driving me wild with insanity. I seriously don't remember those enemies at all. Like, all I remember in this game... Yeah, I see, like, the big birds over there. I remember the huge-ass birds. I remember moblins, but... Or bokoblins. They're not moblins. There is actually a weird distinction about moblins and bokoblins in the Zelda world. And that is that... Um, well, it's not a weird distinction. They're all evil troll things, but... Moblins are the ones with, uh, moblins are the ones with pig faces, whereas bokoblins are the ones that just look ugly as fuck. I mean, they all look ugly as fuck, but moblins have pig, like, specifically, oh, specifically, mo it's, it is a fact, it is a fact of science that moblins do, in fact, have pig faces, whereas bokoblins are just kind of like ugly goblin things, so... That's how you can tell the difference, and this gate up up ahead appears to be locked, and that's west anyway, so it doesn't even matter. I'm supposed to be heading to the east. I don't even know why I'm going this way, but see, these are totally bokoblins. Also, these guys have quivers attached to their backs, which sort of leads me to believe that if you go far away, maybe they'll shoot at you, but not either of them shot at me as I approached. All right, well, let's head to the east, because I am clearly headed in the wrong direction right now, and... I really do think I'm supposed to have my horse. Maybe I was supposed to go back to... Like, it crosses my mind. Ooh, it's now officially nighttime. I was like, why is... What's this thing attacking me now? But then I remembered that because it's nighttime, there's totes a dude attacking me. By the way, I just gotta say, this game seems to have so many enemies to attack you compared to other Zelda games. Like... In all, like, straight-up, truth-be-told truth, in comparison to other Zelda games, this game seriously seems to just have filled its, like, Hyrule Field area with shit that wanna kills you, wants to kill you, not wanna kills you. Whereas, in other Zelda games, it seems like there's much less shit hell-bent on murdering you, and in fact, some of these things appear to damn near well be able to keep up with me and are, like, filling up my camera with glitch pictures right now as I go about my business. Like, fuck you. Ooh! The mailman looks crazy in this game, and he has a letter for me. Go no further, there is a black wall that blocks the way. I thought I would deliver a few letters, but it seems impossible. I am the honorable and dependable letter carrier known to some as the postman. Now that I have introduced myself, please take this letter and read it at your leisure. Is it a letter for me? To read the letter, press start to open your collection screen, then select the letter. You can do that and read any letters you receive. Do it whenever you see fit. Well, my business is concluded. Onward to mail! Alright, cool. Well, let us open up the pause screen and check out my first letter. Just like a real person gets. Alright, letters. Post office notice. I have a letter for you. I will approach you at a high speed. Do not... <laughs> That's amazing. Alright, so, if the if the postman has a letter for me... Apparently, now he was just like, you gotta know, I'm gonna deliver it at all costs, and you need not fear my letter-delivering prowess. But, so at least I know that I am going the right way, because I triggered a cutscene, which I personally am gonna say that triggering a cutscene leads me to believe that I'm going in the correct direction in a game. Hey, it was much closer than I thought. You remember, right? You know what this is. If you set foot in there, you might be a wolf again for quite some time, for at least as long as it takes to you to save the light of Elden from Twilight anyways. So, shall we try to go see that light spirit of Elden? Yes. Here we go. Finally being a wolf again. What's weird is there comes a point in the scheme where you can freely transform in between wolf and human. And I'm excited for that point to come up. Want me to let you into Twilight? Yes! I already told you yes. If I told you yes once, I will tell you yes. A million times I would like to go into the twilight and having gone into the twilight though and now being a wolf I feel that this is going to be a fantastic time to end this episode I'm not a wolf oh no I'm gonna I'm about to, I was like I'm gonna I'm totally gonna become a wolf all right now that I'm in the twilight 
I am going to end this episode once she is done talking. And then, in the next episode, I'll be exploring the Elden Province and saving the light in this area so I can do all that I require in life. This has been Ragdar. Thank you for watching.